Jennifer Willoughby, the second wife of President Trump's staff secretary Rob Porter has spoken on the record to Daily Mail. Com about her abusive marriage to the man, described as one of the most important players in the Oval Office. Willoughby, 39, told DailyMail.com she was walking on eggshells during their marriage due to his explosive anger. Porter's first wife Colby Holderness confirmed to DailyMail.com. He was verbally, emotionally, and physically abusive, and that is why I left. Last week, DailyMail.com revealed that Porter has been dating White House Director of Communications Hope Hicks. When reached for comment, Porter told DailyMail.com. I will not comment about these matters beyond stating that many of these allegations are slanderous and simply false. John Kelly, chief of staff, commented, Rob Porter is a man of true integrity and honor and I can't say enough good things about him. He is a friend a confidant and a trusted professional. I am proud to serve alongside him. I have worked directly with Rob Porter nearly every day for the last year and the person I know is someone of the highest integrity and exemplary character, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders told Daily Mail. Com. Those of us who have the privilege of knowing him are better people because of it. Willoughby, who bears more than a passing resemblance to glamorous Hicks, claims that on December 22, 2010, Porter pulled her naked from the shower by the shoulders and yelled at her. She refused to join his family on a vacation after that. Dot. I want to be very clear when I say this, Willoughby said. I don't want to be married to him. Dot. I would not recommend anyone to date him or marry him. But I definitely want him in the White House and the position he is in. I think his integrity and ability to do his job is impeccable. And the majority of the issues he suffers from are very personal and intimate. He called her a VF King BH on their honeymoon at Myrtle Beach between Christmas and New Year, she says. We had already been fighting. I had already seen more extreme versions of the overreactions of anger that I had seen back in August, before they were married. I can't remember what triggered it. He lashed out and was really angry, and both under his breath and explicitly to me called me a effing bh and effing ridiculouses. He accused me of not caring about him or not caring about his needs. That whole week, or however long it was, several days of honeymoon was spent with me trying not to make him upset. Jenny, as she's known to her friends, said that his anger would be unpredictable. I frequently would do favors for friends, like watch their dog or go pick up their daughter, and he would be angry that I would do that. In the first weeks and months, his explanation for his anger was that his first marriage had been very toxic, rooted in arguments, accusations, and manipulation and he was carrying over from that relationship. He would say, 
that he was so used to being treated this way by his ex-wife that he was projecting that onto me. That was the explanation. Jenny said that she left manipulated throughout the marriage. He's very intelligent, extremely good with his words, and is a lawyer by profession, and is able to take words that I had said and use them in a way that it would confuse me as to what I meant, she told Daily Mail. Come in the bombshell interview. He would challenge my intelligence or a statement that I had made by implying that I couldn't have possibly come up with it on my own and that I must have been influenced by someone. I would start to doubt myself. He was using words against me. It was his norm in dealing with behavior he didn't like. Jenny said that she never saw Rob take his anger out on other people, not even road rage, but that is, was all behind closed doors. That was something that was interesting to me, from a case study perspective. It does seem to be very much focused in an intimate, romantic relationship. It's almost as though the anger that could have been placed on his father was placed on the romantic partner. Fairly soon after New Year in 2010, I started seeing a therapist and requested that Rob see a therapist because I was so distressed about his anger, she reveals. I also had met with a bishop in the Mormon church about his anger. It came to a head, and in February or March 2010, I was so worn down and exhausted by the anger that I requested we have a separation. I never received specific threats from Rob, he was just often angry, and it was oppressive, and I started to take on the blame and the weight of his lack of self worth. Over the course of the years of our marriage, I can think of several times where I was collapsing on the ground in tears and saying, just leave me alone, just stop because the anger and the insults were too much. He would say that I was worthless, that I was a liar this is not one instance, these are things that he might have said in a rage. that I always got my way, that I was selfish, that I didn't care about him about his needs. Any version of those types of statements, heard enough times, with enough force behind them are devastating. She had a miscarriage at six weeks pregnant towards the end of their marriage. The stress of being pregnant in that marriage was hard, and then the shame and depression of not being pregnant anymore was also hard, she said. On June 19, 2010, she filed a protective order against Rob because he violated their separation agreement at the time and would not leave their apartment. According to a complaint filed with the police, he punched the glass on the door to their home, cutting his hand in the process at which point she called the police. He then left and following that she filed a temporary protective order 